Hello all, welcome to R&D Labs with me Rohan and in today's session we are going to see how to implement Google Firebase Crashlytics to your Swift project. For some of you who don't know what Google Firebase Crashlytics is, it's an SDK provided by Google within the Firebase ecosystem that helps you with crash reporting, application logging and statistical analysis for your app. It's compatible with Android, iOS and Unity platforms. So how do we do this in our Swift project? Let's check this out. So to open up the Firebase console, you'll have to add console.firebase.google.com to the address bar of your browser. And you'll have to log in using your Google credentials. Once you have done that, you will see the project window, which will list down various projects that you have done. In my case, there are two. So let's head down to create a new project. So let's click add project and give your project a name. So in our case, uh, let's type uh, test crashlytics and click continue yes this is a very important step and uh, i will definitely leave it up to you but in my recommendation please enable google analytics to your project it will help the project be part of the firebase ecosystem so uh, i'll just leave it as it is and click continue let's select the account that we have and create a project uh, usually it takes around 30 seconds for the firebase uh, to create a project so let's leave it at that and uh, we'll wait for it to create great so the project is created once you click continue it will open up your project window there it is so once the project window is open as you can see on to your left hand side there are four sections the first section is develop which will help you with tools to develop your application the second section is all about quality uh, which includes the topic that we are actually talking today which is crash analytics and the third section is all about google analytics and fourth section is grow which will give additional tools for your application so let's head down to crash analytics the topic of our tutorial today so once we open up the crash analytics page it will ask you to add an app so in our case we are going to add an ios app so let's click ios and we will have to give the bundle identifier of our application so let's open up the xcode project that we have created so uh, let's copy the bundle identifier from our xcode project To the firebase console and i'll leave the rest of the fields empty since they are optional and i'll register the application now in this step we will have to add google service info p list file to our project so we will click download button and which will download the google service info p list file to our project so let's quickly add that file to our project and let's drag the Google service info plist file to our project and we'll add it here. So let's finish it. Yes, so the file is added. Now let's click next. Here we will have to add uh, the pod files uh, for Firebase analytics and Firebase crash analytics. Since we don't have a pod file created for our project, uh, let's copy this command to create a pod file first and open up the terminal and run the command to create the pod file so the pod file is created as expected so now let's open up the pod file to add the pod for firebase analytics and firebase crash analytics so the pod file is here let's add the pod file for firebase crash analytics first And we will follow that up with Firebase Analytics. All right, just save this and, and we will have to install both the pods to our project. So let's write pod install. 
and this should install both the pods to our project. Once it's done, you will have to reopen the Xcode with XE workspace file so that the pods are loaded. So let's open up our project using XE workspace file. So the Xcode is open. Now let's open up the appdelegate.swift class and import the Firebase module to it. So let's import Firebase. And, and next we will have to configure the Firebase to our project. So let's head down to application dead finish launching with options method and add Firebase app.configure. Once we are done, we will have to just try building this and see whether we are running into any errors or not. All right. So uh, once you are done with this, let's head back to the Firebase console and click Next. Uh, this section we have already done in the Xcode uh, IDE. Let's click Next again. Now we have just built the project. Uh, we will have to run the application in a simulator for it to communicate with the Firebase servers. So let's open up the Xcode and run the app in the simulator. The status will automatically be checked by the Firebase servers. Once the application that we have over here launched on a simulator, we'll try to communicate with Firebase. There it is, the application has communicated and Firebase has returned uh, the status to us. Uh, it did take around a couple of minutes, uh, if not long, I think, for the uh, servers to communicate and give us the status. So once you're done with this, just click continue to console button and uh, we are not done yet. Okay, so after we do that, we will have to click enable crashletics button as well. Yes. So once you do that, uh, let's keep it as it is for now and head back to our project. We have few more things to do before the crashletics uh, begin to appear on this console. So once you're headed back to the project, open up the projects and target section and uh, let's head down to the build phases. And here you will have to specify a new run script phase. So let's click the plus sign here and click new run script phase. So once you're done that, you have to expand the run script. Here, you will have to specify three scripts. I have already kept that ready for this tutorial. So let me bring that up for you. Okay, now we will have to add the run script. And once we have done that, we will have to add two input file statements. And let's copy the one that is here into the section and we will copy the second command as well and we will add it right below there okay so once we have added them uh, let's build it and see whether we are running into any errors or not okay the uh, project is successfully built next we will have to adjust our project build settings to allow the crashes to be captured by crashletics so uh, the hard work is over. Now let's head down uh, to our project build settings and uh, open that up. And here we will have to search for a debug information. Uh, this one, yes, right here. And change it from dwarf to dwarf with uh, dsym file. And that's it. And we will have to build this and see whether we are running into errors again. Uh, no, uh, so the build is successful. Uh, now, what do we do? Uh, for example, if uh, the application doesn't have any error, it, it will not show up in the crashletics at all. So for us to check uh, whether we would be having any errors or not, uh, let's head down to the view controller.swift class and in the view did load uh, method, let's add a fatal error statement so that the app will crash. <laughs> interesting right so uh, let's run this in a simulator and see whether we are actually having a crash yep 
there you go uh, a crash has happened okay so uh, it should show up on the crashlytics window what google says is the documentation is around five minutes of time so in my experience i have seen uh, the crashes being shown on the log say around a couple of minutes or so it depends okay so we will just give that time for crashlytics to show our error on the console so let's head back to the console and see what we have over there let's stop our debugger and we will open up the firebase console okay as you can see this is still rotating um, let's refresh the page and see if we have anything in over here okay as you can see uh, the installation of crashlytics is successful let's head down to see what is there in our crashlytics dashboard yes there you go so once you open up the firebase uh, crashlytics dashboard it will give you various tools for you to analyze and to understand where the crash has happened in our case we had written the fatal error code within the view did load method inside view controller class and it will give you the in-depth analysis of where it has happened it will also show you what operating system version the users were running in uh, in our case it was a simulator even that it has shown uh, plus it will also show you how many users are affected what is the timestamp and so that you can relate to uh, whether you have released a new version during that period of time and i would also highly recommend you uh, to please go through the documentation of firebase console because it is not possible for me to go in depth into all the features that are available uh, in your disposal so uh, please head down to the documentation and please build your understanding it is such a wonderful tool for you to manage your application and to know uh, where the issues are so this is how you implement google firebase crashlytics to your swift project i'll highly recommend anyone who's trying to maintain quality to their application implement crashlytics to their app and also please do check out the firebase ecosystem on a whole and be part of it Google has got two plans to start with. The first plan is called the Spark plan that we have used in our tutorial today, and it's completely free. The second plan is called the Blaze plan, which is paid. I hope you like this video. If you still have any doubts, please reach me out in the comment section. Please like and subscribe to the channel and see you until next time. Cheers.